Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. In our top story, all three islands have received new ambulances. St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John. In all, five ambulances were purchased by the Virgin Islands government and were custom built to manage the unique landscapes on the territory's terrain. One of the five ambulances, two were unveiled earlier today on St. Croix at a ribbon cutting ceremony at the Charles Howard Memorial Complex. Stephanie Brown reports. Earlier today, the Virgin Islands Department of Health, along with its partners, displayed five new emergency vehicles. In late of 2016, local emergency technicians were burdened with providing services with outdated and non-compliant ambulances. The Department of Health is ecstatic that we can provide our EMTs with the state-of-the-art ambulances. As a result of their satisfaction, they are equipped to be able to maximize their skills and talents. In September of 2016, the Public Finance Authority and Governor Mapp set aside $1 million to purchase six ambulances and EMS equipment. I'm sure when you guys look at it, you're like, you've never seen anything like these. Um, they are specifically made for this terrain. Um, they come fully equipped. And, and we're just proud to have them here. Um, these ambulances will be put into services immediately after this ceremony. In 2010, the National Registry of Medical Technicians informed that their territory's EMTs needed upgrades in training and services and gave a deadline set for March of 2017. But I'm here today to tell you that St. Croix EMS came in compliance by March 31st of 2014. So I want you all to give the EMTs a warm Outside the Charles Howard Complex, emergency medical technicians showcase the new ambulances that are in compliance with national standards. Senator Hansen got a first-hand experience of the functions in the ambulance. So now we're going up, preparing the patient for load. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. On Monday, April 24th, the Department of Health will also hold a ribbon-cutting ceremony on St. Thomas. The ceremony will be held at the Schneider Regional Medical Center from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30. Senators Tregenza Roach, Jeanette Millen-Young, and Dwayne DeGraff of the Virgin Islands 32nd Legislature have requested a legislative legal opinion to determine what action the legislature should take if the Board of Elections does not certify the results of the 2017 special election. On Tuesday, Members of the St. Thomas St. John Board of Elections called members of the legislature cowards for not making executive decisions on whether to decertify nor seat Senator elect Kevin Rodriguez, who had ran sixth place in the St. Thomas District 2016 general elections. Kevin Rodriguez was deemed ineligible by the VI Supreme Court to be seated as a senator, and subsequently there has been ongoing legal battles. Senator Tregenza Roach quoted, I I really believe that the legislature missed an opportunity to provide closure in this matter early on. The legal counsel's opinion made it clear that we were required to act and as provided in the Organic Act, we would have had the opportunity to make the final decision on whether or not Senator-elect Kevin Rodriguez will be seated as a member of the body. The VIPD held a briefing on carnival safety today. Here's Captain Jarvis with more. And we have just uh, about enough officers scheduled to work inside the village just to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, we are also putting up the lights around the village area and we also have cameras in the village to ensure that, you know, if anything happens that uh, we could pick it up and, and we could uh, address it as quickly as possible. Also, I'm asking everyone, please, if you see something, say something and let a law enforcement officer know so that we could do something. It's not only the Virgin Islands Police Department that, is, that will be assigned to these events, but we have also the other agencies, law enforcement agencies as well, that will be helping out, um, assisting the Virgin Islands Police Department. 
and of course that's uh, referring to the village uh, nightly entertainment that's kicking off and uh, kicks off this evening there's nightly entertainment from 6 to 3 a.m. and tonight DJ Eddie Milo's Kings when hyper songs final phase and crossfire Saturday DJ Tony T Avengers Sizzler poison and Sunday DJ Cypher Elizabeth Watley Pumper and the unit and Ella crew featuring Tizzy and uh, later on in the newscast we'll have our carnival corner with some more information Governor Kenneth Mapp and Lieutenant Governor Osbert Potter encourages all Virgin Islanders to take part in the upcoming Virgin Islands Carnival celebrations and to enjoy the festivities responsibly. The governor, by proclamation, has granted administrative leave for government employees to enable their participation in major carnival events this week. The public is reminded that most government offices will be closed during these periods. For employees in the St. Thomas St. John District, leave is granted on Wednesday, April 26, from 12 to 5 p.m., which is the Food Arts and Craft Fair Day and on Thursday, April 27th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for Juve. Friday, April 28th is a legal holiday in the USVI, so non-essential employees territory-wide may participate in the Carnival Children's Parade. During this historical and festive season, hundreds of families, friends, visitors, and supporters will be visiting the territory to enjoy and partake of our cultural activities and the sights and sounds of Carnival, the governor wrote in his proclamation. He said this annual celebration provides a tremendous financial boost to our economy and helps to promote a greater understanding and appreciation of carnival and our culture. Well, this week, Vitima began the installation of 20 new outdoor sirens territory-wide, including on Water Island. The siren system will also be upgraded to include pre-recorded messages in Spanish and French. The installation project is expected to be complete by August 2017. Technicians installing the sirens will conduct an audio test at each site. They remind you, please do not be alarmed. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with the Stock Market Watch. According to the numbers, the Dow down 30, NASDAQ 6, S&P 500 down 7. Coming up on News 2, it has been transformed into a centennial commemoration for our 65th Carnival Celebration. That's the Carnival theme. We'll have our Carnival Corner and some of the events coming up, coming up next. Welcome back. The annual UVI 13D Student Entrepreneurship Competition was held today at the University of the Virgin Islands. The VIA sponsored event was open to the public. Student entrepreneur teams presented their business proposals to a judges panel in an effort to win $60,000 in prize money to fund their startups. Here's more. So this is the culmination of all the entrepreneurship programs we run at the university, which is now four. We start in the fall with a hackathon, and then we go to a design slam, then we have a business design competition, and then the ultimate is this 13D business competition, which we give away $60,000 in seed money for entrepreneurs to start their businesses. Two weeks ago, we had 10 teams. Six months ago, we had 40 teams. Uh, we had a semi-elimination around uh, two weeks ago. We got from 10 to 5. Five teams competed today, and the top three, uh, top team took away $30,000, so the second team, 20, and the third, uh, $10,000. First, uh, knowing how to be an entrepreneur, knowing how to recognize opportunities, and knowing how to transform those opportunities into something you can monetize, something you can make a living doing, is is critical. The second thing is to really start businesses. This is a territory of small businesses. 80% of the businesses in the territory have less than 10 employees. So if we can get more businesses in the territory, more successful businesses in the territory, that's only going to help our economy. And we will share more from the 13D competition, including winners and more on their projects. Well, turning to news of the Caribbean in Nevis, Ambassador Elizabeth Eklund of Sweden paid a visit to the Honorable Premier of Nevis, Vance Amri. Here's more from Nevis News Channel 5.
Earlier today, the Ambassador Extraordinary and a Plenipotentiary of Sweden to St. Kitts and Nevis, Her Excellency Elizabeth Eklund, paid a courtesy call on Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Vance Emery, at his office at Pennies. Um, Sweden and St. Kitts and Nevis uh, share values and we also uh, try to approach the global challenges in, in a similar way we believe in multilateral solutions to global, to global challenges and it's been uh, very interesting for me to speak to the Premier on issues such as climate change, waste management and the need to cooperate in these matters. Premier Amory then expressed his gratitude to Her Excellency Eklund for taking the time out to discuss the relationship between Sweden and St. Kitts and Nevis. And so it's an honor for me to have had you meet with us and uh, to share our views on climate change and the, the matter of how we as uh, small island states, St. Kitts and Nevis, could or have to manage our resources and manage the environment. And uh, I really do wish you well Thank as you. our new ambassador Thank of your you. country. Thank you very much. And look forward to meeting you again Absolutely. and discussing Absolutely. other issues. Her Excellency Eklund also spoke with the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the federal government, the Honorable Mark Brantley. And we're also concerned that within the European Union, Singus and Nevis would have lost an ally in terms of the United Kingdom, a voice, if you will, to speak on our behalf on certain important matters. And so I raise that as well to say to not just Sweden, but to the Nordic countries that we would wish them to be our allies in those forums, of which, of course, Singus and Nevis are not members, but which are important forums, such as the European Union. Time for our Calip Carnival Corner there. The Calypso Elimination Tent was held at Crown Bay on Saturday, April 1st. The large audience was treated to 18 participants who did their best to make it to the Calypso Finals. And by the end of the night, nine finalists were selected. The Virgin Islands Calypso Competition will be held on Saturday, April 22nd, 8 p.m. at the Lionel Roberts Stadium. The reigning queen, Tamisha Caribbean Queen Lightbird, stopped by to chat with us. Um, the reason I decided to join Calypso was because of my love for music and as a VI ambassador I wanted to keep the culture of Calypso alive and as a matter of fact not just women dominating here in the Virgin Islands such as myself but also throughout the Caribbean women are making it to the top and becoming changing the whole era of Calypso King to Calypso Queen. Right now I'm the reigning Calypso Queen for 2016 here on the island of St. Thomas, two-time Calypso Queen for St. Croix and also for 2016 Atlanta, Georgia for their Atlanta Carnival. I'm definitely trying to be as big as Calypso Rose. She got this whole big award in Europe and I want my music to travel and be worldwide, known worldwide. Um, and of course, I want to be able to encourage other women and other young people to be a part of our culture of Calypso. Like I said, it's dying out and we want to be able to keep it alive. And that's my job, my task as your reigning queen. It's the 65th Carnival, y'all. Come out, support, and of course, make sure you go and attend the Virgin Islands Calypso Monarch Competition tomorrow, April 22nd at the Lionel Roberts Stadium, where you will get to see your favorite Calypsonians take the stage against Calypso Queen, who is the reigning Calypso Monarch of the Virgin Islands. It starts at 8 p.m. sharp, so don't be late. See you then. Inspiring words there from Tamisha and best of luck to all the Calypsonians. Meanwhile, there's more entertainment icon of the island. Celebrity events that's coming up this weekend featuring celebrity radio personality, New York City's The Breakfast Club, Angela Yee, and TV reality superstar, love and hip hop, Yandy Smith, Grammy Award winning music executive, Amir Winden, and producer songwriter, Donnie Scantz. Now the team also includes a New York Times bestselling author. They all stop by our studios. Here's more. Icon of the islands, you know, basically in the Virgin Islands, we've been doing the Virgin Islands Idol for the last nine years. And we basically just had to take it up a level, you know. I brought in some of my celebrity friends, some of my super producer friends, you know, some of my directing friends. And actually, we want to take the Virgin Islands Idol, what started here nine years ago, across the Caribbean, across the world. So now we got Icon of the Islands. The team that we have is absolutely fantastic. We have 
people looking for different things, but together they bring a 360 view of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, some might be looking for the it factor, others will be looking for the production, the talent as far as vocal range or whatever they're presenting. We were in the Bahamas, we found some great contestants, and now it's really good to be like back home on St. Thomas, uh, where this whole contest started. Um, we're getting ready to see some great people, and I'm really excited to see who we meet. You know, I wanted to definitely come and just put a big foot into, you know, the market here as far as what the artists have. You know, it's really, it's really a good market, I think. We are out here looking for the next icon of this island. So we're having a host of auditions, the first one being at Sugar Bay at noon on Saturday. Um, and, you know, the best and the finest come out. We're not looking for anyone that's trying to get in the industry. We're not looking for anyone that may have talent. We want the people that are already there. We want the people that maybe you haven't had your big break, but you have definitely been consistent at your craft and at your talent. This is for the big leagues, okay? And I think what we are looking for is to find somebody who we can see is a star. A lot of times there's nothing that's quote unquote original out there anymore. Nobody's going to recreate anything, but we're looking for somebody that's passionate, that you could look at them and see they have something different, something unique about them, and somebody that is comfortable. You can see how the crowd reacts to somebody and see if they're going to be a star. There's so many people out there that just haven't yet been discovered, so this is, I feel like, an untapped area for us to come to and see all these people that deserve that shot that they need to get. Well, more events lined up. The weekend is here. Emmett has your guide of uh, more some more big events scheduled. Here's more. Ready, ready, ready. It's another episode. When we out on the road, this is what we love to celebrate, to celebrate. It's a natural essence that created all of us. Hey, love is nothing to take. Hi, welcome to Ivy Designs, the home of the Infinity Bracelet and a few other inspired designs. Come see us sometime on Company Street. In fact, today, why not come see us at Art Thursday event where we have a few hors d'oeuvres, some wine, some cheese, and some live music with Jack Peterson outside. So please, come by and see us anytime. Now for your weekend guide. Friday, St. Croix, McDonald presents Brainy of the Smurfs. St. Thomas, the Carnival Village opens to who? Crossfire, straight out of Barbados. Then continues to the entire week, featuring the best of the Virgin Islands and the Caribbean, including Ricardo Drew, Destra, Asa Banton, and Patrice Roberts, to name a few. Saturday, McDonald's got Brainy at Lockhart Garden, St. Thomas, and the Rave Party. Sunday is Water Sports and the Steel Pan Jamboree on the waterfront. Wednesday is the food fair, followed by the Carnival Reggae Fest, featuring Sizzla Kalanji. Six at the Lionel Roberts Stadium, Iconic Vision, and LP Entertainment present the icon of the island's Carnival Reggae Fest, featuring direct from Jamaica, it's the legendary Sizzla Kalanji. Also starring Desiree, Jama, Nayora, King Lion, Nicara, Ira Divine, and the three finalists repping the VI in the Bahamas at the grand finale, all backed by D-Lab and Identity Explosion, plus juggling by Red Lion Sounds. Thank you, Mama, for the nine months. Show starts at 9 p.m. General admission tickets are $40. VIP is $100. Get them at Urban Threads Buccaneer Mall. Just Threads Tutu Park Mall. Lots of options, lots of things outdoors. Let's stick around and see what the weather looks like for the weekend. That's coming up next.
at your current conditions out there with our satellite and you can see across the Virgin Islands. Not much going on. We do have our easterly winds around an area of high pressure so there could be a brief passing shower as some moisture gets dragged into this. Any shower that we have into next week could possibly be a little bit heavier or we could see some enhanced moisture there. But taking a look across the area, see how we've had just a couple of showers here that have been moving through. So we'll see as we go into the nighttime hours, we lose the daytime heating, therefore we lose some of the shower activity. So for tonight, partly cloudy skies with an overnight low of 74. In St. John for tomorrow, partly sunny, a temperature of 83 degrees. And into uh, parts of St. Croix and St. Thomas, we could see a passing brief shower. So you can't rule that out in St. Thomas with a temperature of 83. Otherwise, it's partly sunny. And in St. Croix, there is another location where we could see perhaps a brief shower around with a temperature of 83 degrees with clouds and some sun. We have uh, small crafts to use caution here in the Atlantic side. We have waves increasing four to six feet, winds out of the east at 10 to 15 knots. And then on the uh, Caribbean side, waves are three to five feet. We have an easterly wind at 10 to 15 knots. Looking through the forecast period now on your Saturday. Like I said, most places will stay dry uh, other than maybe a brief passing trade wind shower. On Sunday, only a stray shower with a mixture of clouds and intervals of sunshine as well, 84 degrees. On Monday, a couple of brief showers around later in the afternoon. And Tuesday into Wednesday, we may see a few showers as that system to the east drifts a little bit closer to the area, excuse me, the system to the west drifts a little bit closer to the east and that could bring a few showers on Tuesday and maybe a shower or two on Wednesday as well with a temperature each day of 85 degrees. Sandy? Thank you for that. It's time for our news weather picture by Shamai Montez, fifth grader. And uh, Shamai has some uh, great outdoor uh, conditions there. Some uh, nice typical VI weather, nice greenery, something fun to do this weekend, Shamai. Thank you for that. Have a wonderful weekend. Be sure to stick around. News to Sports comes your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. If you wanted to witness something that had never been done before, the last night's NBA playoff game between the Pacers and the Cavs was meant for you. Game 3 at Indiana, the Pacers down 0-2 and they are playing like a team possessed. Second quarter, Miles Turner provides the holy roller, deliver us from evil, slam. Pacers are up by 25 at the half. But the Cavs, they come back. Third quarter, LeBron goes berserk. After this step back three, the Cavs, they're up by four. Who knew? Just over one minute remaining, and the Cannon Fry drills the three. And the Cavs, well, they win. They take a 3-0 series lead with a 119-114 victory. The Cavs set an NBA record by winning after being down by 25 at the half of any playoff game. To win on the road in the postseason is, is already tough enough. You know, for us to win in the fashion we did tonight is even tougher. So, you know, I don't think as a group we don't take that for granted. And uh, we showed that emotion. You know, after the, the clock went to zero. Moving over to Milwaukee, Raptors versus the Bucks. Game three, the series tied at one apiece. This game was over quick. First quarter, and my new favorite player, the Greek freak, Giannis Aded Okumbo, forwards three. The Bucks, they're up by 10. Here's another three. The Bucks are now up by 17. And in the fourth, Giannis with the spin and the jam. Bucks stampede the Raptors 104-77 and take a 2-1 series lead. Cruising into Memphis for Spurs versus Grizzlies, the Grizz looking to get back into the series. Third quarter, Grizz already up by 14 when 40-year-old Vince Carter throws it down. Dude is 40. 
Still in the fourth. Wayne Sheldon goes baseline to put the Grizzlies up by 22, and they go on to maul the Spurs 105-94 to get back in the series at 2-1. Tonight's NBA playoff action has the Celtics visiting the Bulls, the Rockets heading to OKC, and the Clippers visiting the Jazz. Sticking with round ball, the USVI men's national team will head to Argentina for the preliminary round games of the upcoming FIBA America 2017 tournament. The USVI team, coached by former NBA player Sam Mitchell, will be in Group B with Argentina, Venezuela, and Canada. The round robin games will be played from August 27th through the 29th in Bahia Blanca, Argentina. That's it for sports. Have a fabulous weekend, everybody. Sandy, back to you. You as well, Gary. That is all for this edition of News 2. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of all of us here, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time.